Hello YouTube, welcome back to the Domo Talks Let's Play, or the no, Domo Let's Play of If My Heart and Wings Part 7. So, went back to the load screen, just because kind of like going through this whole process. So, let's get on with it. Yes, load. Okay, yes, load the game. Oh, I remember <laughs> freaking Ageha is here for some reason. Early in the morning, the doorbell chimed, so I went to open it, and there I saw Ageha. What are you doing here? That's my question, I know, right? Of course, with her door mother. She remarked to me as she saw me wearing an apron. Lo. Oh, right, I forgot about that. Uh, sort of. I'm gonna go. Okay, I don't think the background music is that much of a problem. It's a student dormitory for our school, huh? I can have focus on the words student dormitory as if questioning their suitability as she gazed at the magnificent entrance. I was surprised too to think that I would become the caretaker of the place that we used to sneak into when we were kids. You freaking kids. Hey, don't get any funny ideas, alright? Why did you come here? Yes, good question. I asked while guessing that perhaps she had to come to invite me to walk to school with her. She is, after all, my number one best friend. What happened to Mabo? Are you kidding me? I was wrong. Oh, well, no. Not every time we're right, so... Miss Alul? <laughs> uh, no clue. No, it's nothing. audio um, while blushing due to the misunderstanding I looked back towards Katori's room I really want to fix the audio because like it's kind of not a thing just to get some distance here alright I'll do this setup one time see how it works so I want to be sure that you are able to hear me more than the game, but that that's the case, then I have to go just the mic. Alright, continuing. While blushing due to the misunderstanding, I looked back towards Katoi's room. Looks like she still hasn't woken up. Even if she gets up now and takes her time eating breakfast, she can still make it with time spare. Oh, that's good to know. Oh, whoops, I skipped that kind of early. Transition. Okay. There's still some left. Why not? Finish my cooking. You're joking, right? I only gave you a little bit. <laughs> Napolitan pasta. Okay, okay, sure. Oh, yeah, I guess. Kanako ate the whole thing again this morning, though. How was the taste? Really? Mm. With good food, it tastes good no matter how much you eat. I don't know what you're talking about. <gasps> An unrefined palate. I don't know what that means. The shock hit me like a bolt of lightning. Oh, it hurts. Oh gosh, she's down. I hung my head in dismay. Medic! We need a medic again. The truth is, a lot of people are not eating your food. 
Agaha had revealed the reason why since yesterday. The boarders hadn't been eating my cooking properly. I thought I'd asked their opinion, which is why I made Agaha some food and got her to eat it. It was made from leftover ingredients anyway. Why is that? I have no idea how this works. Cooking for girls is so difficult. <laughs> Struggles, man. That's okay. Boy or girl, we're all human. Tasty is tasty. That's what I believed. Uh, makes sense, you know. Oh, there's Katori. This is how I was seriously troubled by this. I heard the squeaking of turning wheels coming from down the hallway. First hat, the duck came into the dining hall, then Katori came in after him. It's the opposite of what usually occurs. I don't know if anyone heard that. Katori rubbing her rubbed her sleepy eyes and started preparing Hat's food. So I do have trouble, or I think there's like sometimes when they whisper or talk really low like that, they won't hear it, but hopefully that's not the case, but we'll see. Oh shoot. Katori rubbed her sleepy eyes and started preparing Hat's food. It somehow looked as if the hungry Hat had woken her up. <laughs> oh my goodness, she's gonna eat Hat. Not understanding your words, Hat quack, quacks happily and Katori speaks to him and eats his food. Oh gosh, Hat. I'm pretty sure this is the first time that they've met. Oh wait, no, they're in the same class though, so I'm not sure about that. Katori notices that Agaha's Agaha, 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 yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Agaha, here is here and instantly opens up her eyes. Yes. No. Excuse me again, adjusting stuff because I remembered one problem I had with recording was that my computer's freaking fan is loud, so I'm gonna keep the laptop or computer away. And that should do. Alright. Uh Oh, dang it. That's a good idea. Ooh. Katori gave a hmph <laughs> and made another one of those straight faces she's so good at. Yeah, come to school with us. We don't have like your withdrawal notice or anything like that. Well, I mean, usually you do, so I would assume, you know, you ditch class, whatever. Ah, oh, she's actually going because she asked. Aha, uh -huh. that's how anime works. I forgot that they labeled her as a tsundere, but I'm not, I'm not completely sure that's the case here. Oh, please, you really want to go walk together. That's how it's working. That's how this works. Tori said with a straight face, then turned her wheelchair around. Just as she was about to leave, she stopped the wheelchair and turned around. Yes, we are childhood friends. Huh? Yeah, we're childhood friends. See? I'm way ahead of you, Aoi. Hey. Hey. Aoi may be an idiot, but I'm not, even though I'm controlling him, technically. It looks like she's she has an even worse attitude this morning. However, she did say she was going to school. To go to school. Either same thing. Sky. After tidying up the breakfast things, I left the dormitory with Agaha. On our way to school, somehow our conversation returned to Kotori. 
Is there a reason why Katori stopped coming to school? Ah, so they have talked to each other at least, so they know each other to an extent. That's so like Akiha to worry about that sort of thing. If there are any people who don't really fit into the group or who are who are left or are left out, she won't just ignore them. On the in the past, that's why I started to play with Mabo, so it could it could have been for the same reason. Not sure about that. Yeah, I can imagine that somehow. What? Why? That's mean. When Agaha reminded herself of what happened back then, she warily slouched toward. Agaha is, a cheerful, is cheerful and has many friends. Tori, who didn't respond to Agaha's concerns about her, might have been seen as the one in the wrong by those around them. Since then, she stopped coming to school? Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? So this is like bullying going on? I would imagine so, considering she keeps talking back to us. Agaha is waving her arms around like someone from a kung fu movie. And passionately tells the story. I decide not to ask her what kind of heroic deeds took places. Or what, or for any specific details. Why not? Well, I didn't expect that. Even just by saying something in a slightly harsh way, she gets all cheerful. To learn. To, I don't know, study. It's complicated. Because it's a visual novel. It's all we need to know. Only reason I could think of that was likely. The only reason I could think of that was likely because it has full disabled access. In fact, that could be the main reason. Ah, no, I have to do something about this. I'm the protagonist. Oh, looking at Agatha from the side as she puts her hands behind her head and starts sticking things over. I remember the withdrawal notice that I picked up last night. Oh, great. In the spur of the moment, I decided not to give it back and acted like I knew nothing about it. Is she really in a plan? Is she really planning to drop out? Hmm. It somehow felt like I had picked up some heavy piece of lost property. Heaven's lost property? No, I'm just kidding. The two of us both made troubled faces as we walked. Murmur, murmur. Quite strange commotion surrounded us. What's going on? Question mark? What's going on? Most of the other students around us on their way to school were looking in the same direction. What? Over there was... Oh, it's a strange girl. It's the, it's the medic girl. A tall, slender, beautiful girl walking along. Oh, it's her. It was the girl I met in the garage. Yeah, the one who needed a medic. Everyone was looking at her with curiosity. But seeing that she hadn't noticed that other people were... were uh, but it seems that she didn't hadn't noticed that other people were looking at her talking for so long. I was looking at her in the same way as everyone else, but Agatha took the way I was looking the wrong way. Oh gosh. Well, she is a choice as a heroine in this game, so fine. This... So, I forgot that we didn't know her name, even though I technically know her name already. But, the super repeat student. Oh gosh, I'm getting like a Danganronpa thing, because the super duper high school repeat. Forever. Amane Mochizuki. Super repeat student? Yeah, see, I had the same question. How many years exactly? Is she that stupid? <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure that's not the case. She doesn't look it though, I know, right? 
成績トップとかそういう次元じゃなくて先生ももう教えることは何もないっていうかたまに教えてもらいに行ってるとかなんとか Shit, I I skipped over it, so apologies on that. I don't know how long these things. I, should, I could go auto, but that takes too long. Smarter than the teachers. So, why do you think you're going to be a good one? I'm going to be a good one. 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 Oh my gosh, how long is that? Well, she's probably just walking to school like us. I don't know if she's a genius or not, but she definitely seems like a pretty weird person. Yeah, we kind of know that since like part 5 of this playthrough. And we're on part 7, so. Now we know her name, Amane. Just、um, then abruptly, super repeat soon, Amani Mochizuki stopped, Senpai stopped walking and looked up at the sky. Everyone else mimicked her and looked up too. Oh, the sky. A jet plane flying through the blue sky, pulling its vapor tail, vapor trail along behind it. Everyone soon realized it was a plane and quickly lost interest and started walking again. However, Amani Mochizuki kept on standing there, looking up at the plane, flying high in the sky. Close to the quote. When people came from behind and avoided her like she was in their way, she didn't pay any attention to them either. Yes, indeed, let's go. Sure, my time is running out. Katori arrived just as our morning homeroom class finished. Well, actually, I know what the title of this episode is. もう体調の方はいいのかはいおかげさまでそうか心配してたんだぞ Yes we are all worried about you LOL Tori went past the homeroom teacher who seemed bewildered that she had come back to school all of a sudden then still in her wheelchair arrived at her desk the desk right in front at the front was the only one that didn't have a chair Everyone looked on puzzled. Ah,、oh, shit. Now that Katori was in school, she started her cool allure routine again. Oh gosh, I'm not gonna use that. She concentrated during the lesson and answered the teacher's questions easily when asked. It seems like her grades in regular subjects are at the top of the class. During recess, she sat at her desk reading a book or going off somewhere. She didn't try to talk to anyone, and even if Agita tried to speak to her, she acted like she hadn't noticed. What the hell? The other girls in the class looked like they were worried about how they should treat her and watched her from a distance. During gym class, the way she looked on, bored, left an impression on me. She always looked like she was all alone and didn't seem to be enjoying herself very much. Dun, dun. Hey, Katori! Oh. Yeah, that's the bellfish. Hey, Katori! <coughs> At lunchtime, I found Katori carrying her bag, about to leave the classroom, I ch and I chased her down the hallway. It's lunchtime, you know? Where are you going? Or what are you going? What? What are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? Whoosh! Suddenly, Katori sped away at unbelievable speed. What? Hey! In the heat of the moment, I tried to chase her, but I thought I would bump into passing students, and I was too slow to start moving. Well, she's gone. s h e gone. s h e gone. In the meantime, Katori had already gotten inside the elevator. Darn it! According to the school rules, most students are not allowed to use the elevator. It was only supposed to be used by workers or teachers carrying big loads or disabled students like Katori. Even so, I chased after her, only for the doors to close mercilessly on fr in front of me. Oh, she's. How、oh, dare she? How dare you? Through the glass, the one with the self proclaimed clue, cool allure stuck her tongue out and headed to the floor below. So I stood and watched. You're not getting away. Go! Chase her! Puff, puff, puff. 
I ran and made it to the school gates. She was holding her back. It seemed like she was trying to leave early, so I went to cut her off. However, I can't deny the possibility that her lunch is in the bag. Maybe I got the wrong idea. Who knows? If that's not it, then what could be the problem? I watched over the school gates like some guardian statue. Ow! Oh, uh, got hit. Medic! I need a medic. Something crashed into me from behind. In other words, it came from outside the school gates. Ah! Uh. What? Ouch! What was that? Oh gosh, what the hell do we do? I got up and felt like I was crawling out from under an avalanche. Then I saw a big cardboard box and a girl that had fallen over. Oh great, we hit someone. Are you okay? I know who this is. Ah, uh, hey, it's you. Oh, I looked at her as I got up, and without thinking, I thought I was going to say the super repeat student, but I held my tongue. So, that'll be the end of this episode here. Uh, it's a good place to get it off, and thank you for watching. Looks like we will learn more about the super repeat student, or like at least get to talk to her afterwards. But before we end this video, save the game. Yes. Oh. Yes, save the game. Don't know how long to keep talking for. Anyways, that's it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next part of the Let's Play or any video that comes. That I don't know, that's uploaded in the Don't Talk channel. But either way, I'll see you guys later. So, Dumbo, signing off.